So gang, uh, excuse the squeaky chair. You know, one of the things I was thinking is this, this particular title has not really had a lot of love or attention on BGG. So I thought it might be cool to have a look at this game. Uh, <clears throat> this is a complete game that is mostly unpunched. And uh, the person I purchased it from was kind enough to, <laughs> his wife actually, put all the counters back into the the uh, the counter sheets and uh, then they sleeve them all in plastic baggies so it's almost like it's unpunched but there are about 200 counters actually punched and it's missing one counter with, uh, information counter with a star on it uh, but it does have my Luxembourg battalion or regiment or whatever it is that I was missing from my other copy so I am really happy to now have a full and complete version of this game including a couple of trays and a couple of baggies and all of the, you know, the historical bits and pieces. So, you know, pop some of that stuff out. Oops. And you've got your errata sheet. Rules of play. This is a fairly dense game. I'd have to look again. I keep forgetting the sequence where the NATO division commander came first or this came first. Something tells me that NDC came first, but I might be wrong there. And this is the cool thing about this system is that it really it uses movement uh, as the movement points as a mechanism for everything, including combat. And that's what makes it so fascinating to me. And doing it on this sort of scale is pretty amazing. So we've got your densely packed three column rule book, which is a whopping uh, 32 pages of which the last, including operational rules, op optional rules, sorry. Uh, where is it? Come on, dude. Uh, yeah, so it's 28 pages of rules, right? That's for the, uh, the rule book. Then you've got the scenarios and situa situation briefing, which is a honking biggie. And that is... 20, 30 something pages long. It stops. The page numbering has, uh, let me see this here. It's got these orders of battle for the different forces. Let me hold that up for you. So you've got the Warsaw Pact, NATO, Republic of France, and the US, etc. Then you've got a uh, pretty extensive optional political rules, situation briefing there, which is really kind of cool. I've read these or read all this stuff before. And you've got all the charts kind of jammed in the middle here and uh, they need a fair bit of annotation. There's there's some ambiguities or some inconsistencies with the, the CRT here. Uh, often it's better to attack at two to one versus three to one or uh, four to one versus six to one, depending on the results you get, the way that the table's laid out. <laughs> and, <clears throat> you know, there are two camps in that, think and thinking on that one. And we'll talk about that later when I actually do play this. So I'm planning on trying to play this 2016 is when we'll, we'll hopefully get to that. Not that I have it on my calendar, just that I know what else I would like to play this year. And this is all the scenarios and stuff, campaign games and things. Uh, I know what else I want to get through this year. And this guy is going to be, you know, sometime July, August, September of next year, probably. All right. So that's the stuff, the booklets. And you've got these charts here as well. So you've got the air sector charts. I don't want to drop this on my other game here. And you can... Peel these apart and separate them. So you've got these air superiority levels, interception levels, and ground support levels. Similar concepts, but executed differently as the Third World War. And then there are all of the maps, which there are several, including these little separate elements. And I'm not going to lay the whole thing out for you. It's pretty big. But this is the Danish sector and the Di 
modification tracker and movement point expenditure track. So see how there's 50 movement points, right? That's where you're going to get units. You may have to spend 10 minute, 10 movement points to do a hasty attack or uh, 30 movement points to do a deliberate assault, whatever the case might be. You've got all these holding boxes for airfields and things. And you know, that's the Danish, Northern German, North German, Northern Plains section. And you have more of Poland and Germany, Belgium, Frankfurt, and the Fulda Gap right there, right in the middle. I'm really excited to play this game. Uh, I, I've, uh, I've wanted to play this for a long, 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 long time. I almost bought it back when I was a young lad, but the price was outrageous at the time. And import duties and all the rest of it from Australia. There's my little mini mat. And then you've got uh, this is a southern section of the map. These maps are really good condition, much better condition than my other copy. And so this is the southern Bavarian area, Austria, etc. So if we were actually, if we were to look at this, right, we can see. We're covering the, pretty much the same area from Denmark down through the northern plains. And then you've got the Fulda Gap section. And then you've got the southern, the southern front, the beginning of the southern front, ending with Austria and you know, whatever else is down here, right? So similar but very different scale, obviously, because this is battalions, regiments, brigades, things like that. Okay, now counters. It has a marvelous. Uh, Marvelously rich counter, 2,000 counters, rich or insane, one of the two, right? So let's pull this aside. There are two sheets of counters, information counters, I should say, right? Then you have uh, one that escaped. You have your, these are all upside down, let me turn them around. Kind of off to one side here, so I hope you can see what I'm showing you. Okay, so very fragile. So here we go: uh, the West Germans, Canadians, and you have oh, these guys here. The West Germans again down here. These are all aircraft and Soviet forces. You can see how they get knocked around. I think this is these are the ones that have been popped out, right? Well obviously it's Soviets. And then this little chappy here, the Czechs, which are also grey. Polish. These guys, Soviets. Well these are Czechs, this is Czech uh, ground units. Polish ground units. Oh this is air, okay. And let's see here, France, France, France Air, Italians, Austrians. Well, this little dude is United States of America, obviously enough. It's just down at the bottom here, I can't read it. Canada, uh, more Canadians down there. Canada, more Soviets. And then a hodgepodge. Now, I was Liechtenstein is the one that was missing. Uh, that was the one unit that was missing from my other uh, set. And had a few of these blanks were missing as well. But the Danes, Austrians. There's actually an Australian unit in here as well somewhere too. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was Austrian. No, it was... I could have sworn I saw an Australian unit. It was a set of choppers or something. Maybe I'm smoking crack again. I gotta start to lay off that crazy crap. Um, and then these final uh, final set is probably some of the guard units and air units for East Germany. These are all East German forces and Hungarian forces as well. So that gives you a quick little uh, look at that. It's a classic from 78 or 79, I believe. Uh, those that are into the hypothetical on, on World War Three will get a big kick out of that. Those that aren't are going to think that was the most boring thing you've ever seen. So there you have it. Talk to you soon.